Good afternoon, Pankas class. Um, I hope that you enjoyed your live session this morning. I think I saw nearly all of you on there, which was really, really good. Um, so today, we are now going to go over your English lesson for Thursday afternoon. Um, I'm just going to recap very quickly a couple of facts from um, yesterday's lesson that we discussed in our live session, and then we're going to start on today's lesson. I want to share my screen with you now. Okay, so yesterday you had a look at this. So we had a look at, I saw a wabub, and I know that one child this morning asked me what a wabub was, and it's actually an alien word, it's a nonsense word, but we use that to help us remember these words, and that's because it helps us create a subordinate clause. So we have these words here, if, since, as, when, although, while, after, before, until, and because, and we use those, the beginning of each of those words creates the, the statement, I saw a wabub, which it wabub is a nonsense word. But we use it to help us remember the words to create a subordinate clause. And we had a look at some different sentences. And when you have a subordinate clause, the subordinate clause doesn't make sense on its own. And we add that to add some more detail to our sentences. That's what we did yesterday. And I hope that I've, I get to see some of your sentences on tapestry as well. Today, we're having a look at tenses. So I'd like you to pause the video and just have a think or talk to the person up next to you or talk to an adult or a teddy bear. What do I mean by the correct tenses? Now we've looked at three tenses in class before. I'd like you to have a think about what they are. If you could pause the video now. Okay, so there are three tenses that we've looked at before and they were the past, the present and the future tense. So well done if you could remember them, that's, that's fantastic. So we're gonna be focusing on the tenses, looking at what they are, and then we're gonna focus on one in particular to help us with the non-chronological reports. Now, I'd like to pause the video again and tell someone in your room or tell your teddy bear, what does past tense mean? What does present tense mean? And what does the future tense mean? So three different ones we've looked at in class. What do the three of them mean? Have a think and pause the video now. Okay, so we had three tenses. We're gonna focus on one today. We're gonna to focus on the past tense today. And we're gonna have a look at some sentences that you use the past tense. And there's a couple of activities for you to do as well. Now, past tense means it's already happened. So we had a look at past tense when we looked at non-chronological report. It means it's already happened. So for example, anything you did yesterday, that's in the past tense. Anything that happened this morning, so our live session, that was in the past tense. Present tense means it's happening now. So right now, you are watching me teach you this lesson. Right now, in where I am, where I live, it's raining outside. That's the present tense. The future tense is what is going to happen. So for example, in the future tense, I may say, um, later on, you are going to complete the past tense activities. Or it could be, tomorrow, I will see you on the live session in the morning. Or it could be, next year, hopefully, we'll all be in school. That's the future tense. I mean, I'm hoping we'll be back in school before then, but hopefully next year everyone will be back in school. So they are the three tenses. So well done if you got those right. I'll just recap that again. So past tense means it's already happened. Present tense means it's happening right now. And future means it's going to happen. Okay. So we're going to have a look at some sentences focusing on the past tense. In our sentences, we have to have a verb, and the verb often tells us what tense the sentence is in. What is a verb? Can you pause the video and have a think about what a verb is? Okay, so a verb is a doing word, it's an action. For example, run, jump, skip, or sing. If you can't do it, it's not a verb. So a doing word, is a verb and we've gone through our tenses of one through them with you so when we said um, past present and future they've changed the verb so our verb in this sentence so i walk to the shops now the verb is the sentence is the word walked that's my verb i walked to the shops because it says it's got an ed at the end 
it's telling me it's already happened. It's in the past tense. I am walking to the shops right now. That's the present tense. And I will walk to the shops. That's the future. So it could be tomorrow, I will walk to the shops. Sometimes it helps by adding in an extra word. So for example, if I said yesterday, I walk to the shops, that makes sense. If I said yesterday, I will walk to the shops, that doesn't make sense. Sometimes using the words like yesterday or right now or tomorrow, that helps you to work out if it's in the past, present or future. So we've looked at a text map. So we've watched Miss Gossage um, show us the actions. We've looked at the text map. Now this is a written version of our text map. I'm going to read it to you and I want you to try and work out what tense my text map is written in. Try and listen very carefully. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so that you can see it a little bit clearer. The electric hairbrush introduction. The electric hairbrush was in fact a magnetic brush invented by Dr. George Scott. What does it look like? The electric hairbrush was made of bristles and not electrical wires. It looked like an ordinary hairbrush but was engraved with the inventor's name on the handle. What does it do? The electric hairbrush was said to cure baldness and help people's hair thicken and grow. It didn't hurt to use the brush and it became very popular. More information. Dr. George Scott stated that only one person could use a brush at a time. This meant more people bought the brush with more than one in some households. The electric hairbrush was also said to cure headaches amongst many other diseases. Did you know the oldest hairbrush is 230 years old? Now, I'd like you to pause the video and have a think. What tense do you think my text map is written in? And how do you know? I'm going to leave it on there for you for a minute. Okay, well done if you've got past tense. There's some words in there that show us that it's in the past tense. And I'll go through that now. We know it's in the past tense because it's showing you that something's already happened. To work it out, you need to look at the verbs for the doing words and see if they are written in the past tense. They don't always, but they usually end in ED. There are some exceptions, but they sometimes end in ED. Now in my text map, I had the word was. The electric hairbrush was, in fact, a magnetic brush invented by Dr. George Scott. Now if it said is, that would change it. So was is showing me it in the past tense. The verb in that sentence I've got was invented. Now, just like that slide just told us, it's got ed at the end. If I said Dr. George Scott will invent a hairbrush, that means it's going to happen in the future. But this one is saying he invented the hairbrush. That means it's already happened. It ends in ed. I'm just going to change my pen to a highlighter and go through some other ones. The electric hairbrush was made of bristles and not electrical wires. Again, we've got the word was. It looked like an ordinary hairbrush, but was engraved with the inventor's name on the handle. There's two verbs in that sentence. It looked. Again, it's got ED at the end. So it's already happened. Engraved is in ED at the end. It's already happened. It looked like an ordinary hairbrush, but was engraved with the inventor's name on the handle. So there's clues in there to help us work it out. Now, I'd like you to write down any other words in our text map that show it's a past tense. So it's your first activity. So I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and I want you to write down any words you can see in our text map that show that it was written in the past tense. Now I helped you with the first two sections. I'd like you to write down anything that shows us it's a past tense. Now remember, we're looking for a doing word, our verbs. They often end in ED, they don't always. So have a look carefully and pause the video here. Now, when you do your non-chronological report about your invention, 
the object that you have decided to invent in your design and technology lesson, you are going to be writing your report in the past tense as if it was a Victorian invention. So our non-chronological non reports are going to be written in the past tense. So all of these facts about our past tense and knowing and recognising these words is going to, are going to help you when you're writing your report about your invention. So let's do a little past tense activity. Now, you're going to write down on your piece of paper that you've got in front of you, which one is written in the past tense. So the option is, I walked in the park. I walk in the park. Remember what I said, you could add a word because it's past tense. So I could add yesterday to help me work it out. Yesterday, I walked in the park. Yesterday, I walk in the park. Which one makes more sense? And remember what we said we were looking for in a verb, the past tense. So you should write on your piece of paper which one is written in the past tense. So it's already happened. So it's either I walked in the park or I walk in the park. Now I've helped you quite a lot with that one. Let's see if you can do the next one by yourself. He laughs at me. He laughed at me. Which one is written in the past tense? Remember, you can use the word yesterday to help you at the start. So yesterday, he laughs at me. Yesterday, he laughed at me. Write down what you think it is. And then we can see if you put it on staffordshire, I'll see if you got it right. The iPad is touchscreen. The iPad was touchscreen. This one's a bit trickier because you haven't got a verb there that ends in ed. So maybe add the word yesterday. If that's going to help you or just have a think about it, what happened already? The iPad is touchscreen. The iPad was touchscreen. OK, it's going to get a little bit harder now. You've got to choose the correct past tense because some verbs follow different rules. Let's try this one. I run to the shops. I ran to the shops. I have to write that on your piece of paper. Which one is correct for the correct past tense? I run to the shops. I ran to the shops. Remember, you can pause the video if you need a bit more time to write these down. OK, let's try this one. I bought some sweets. I buy some sweets. Which one's the correct past tense? These are trickier verbs now. I bought some sweets. I buy some sweets. I wrote a story. I write a story. I wrote a story. I write a story. Have a think about which one you think is the correct one. OK, now there's different activities that I'm going to show you. I'd like you to choose which one is the most appropriate for you. So I'm going to show you an activity. And if you think actually that's too simple, I'm going to be able to find that too easy. I'd like you to choose a different activity. So there's different activities for you to choose. So I'm going to go through them and then you can pause the video on the one that's best for you. OK, so the first activity choice is this one. Here, you've got to write out these sentences and choose the correct past tense verb. So, for example, here it says, yesterday, I run slash ran to the park. You need to write out this sentence, but you need to choose if it's going to be run or ran. Same with this one, same with this one. And your challenge, you've got slightly trickier verbs to choose from. That's the first activity. The next activity here, you've got to write out the sentence that is written in the past tense. So you've got an option here, and you've got to write the one that, out of the two that's written in the past tense. And then here, you've got to write out which one is correct. So for example, the boy drew a picture or the boy drew a picture, you write the correct one. Or the final option is activity three. Here, you need to write out the sentence that is written in the correct past tense. And then the bottom section, it says you need to change these sentences to the past tense. So some Victorian children work in factories. You need to write out that sentence 
changing it into the past tense. And I'll give you a clue, the verb is the bit you need to focus on. So I'd like you to have a think about which activity is best suited to you, write it onto a piece of paper, and then put it onto tapestry. So we'll go through these, so you can have this one, this one, or this one, and you can pause it on the correct bit. Now the questions earlier on, if you put it onto tapestry, I'll mark them for you and check that you've got those answers correct. Hope that all makes sense. Anything that you have, you're not sure about, put it onto tapestry or you can ask me in tomorrow's live and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Have a fantastic afternoon and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.